Hey guys, Brian here. Today we're looking at the AGM Rattler TS35384. Before we get into the meat of the optic, let's go over the specs real quick. The TS35384 offers 384 by 288 resolution, 1024 by 768 resolution on an OLED display, 8x digital zoom, snapshot and video recording with a built-in 16 gigabyte storage. It supports distance measurement. You have four adjustable color palettes, Wi-Fi data transmission. It's waterproof and shockproof, up to four hours continuous usage. It's compatible with external power supplies and has a limited three-year warranty. Okay, with the specs out of the way, what are my thoughts on this optic? Honestly, I think it's a really good optic. You know, it's easy to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars on optics these days, especially when you get into the thermal game. And with a street price of $2,500, you get a ton of features packed in a very small package that's gonna do what most everybody really needs these days. One thing I like about this that really is a very simple thing, but the little things mean a lot to me, being in the photo and video world, I want things to be easy to operate and very intuitive. The button layout on this is awesome. It's really simple to use, especially when you're behind the gun. I had this tripod mounted like I do now, but obviously up on a bigger tripod, and I could very easily take my support hand and adjust what I needed, where I needed, and I had no problems with it. I really like the fact that the power button is separated from the main button layout. That way you don't easily hit it and you know turn the optic off. Granted, you have to hold it in for a couple of seconds, but in the heat of the moment, it could be easy to do if it were closer to the other buttons. But very easy to reference where you're at up here and it just it works extremely well when it comes to the button layout you've got five main buttons to work with so we have a menu button in the middle we have a mode button that lets you switch between your different color palettes of black hot red hot white hot or fusion we have a capture button up front that lets you take stills or video to the right we have a shutter button that lets you refresh the screen and at the back we have a zoom button that lets you switch between your different zoom ratios the one thing about it is when you zoom you do cut your resolution. So the more you zoom in, the blurrier the image is going to get. That's just the way it works. So can you use this on the base setting? Yes, very easily, as long as your rifle will do it. The rifle I have set up in front of me is not gonna reach out to 200 yards with pinpoint accuracy. It's a lever action rifle for one. And I was running 175 grain subsonic rounds with a suppressor. So at 200 yards, you're basically lobbing artillery rounds at that distance. Anything 100 yards and in, I would have no issues with. But next time I go out with it, I'll have it on a 223 or 308, depending on what I'm going to go hunting for. And uh, that would be a great setup for going out to 200 yards with this optic and easily on the base setting. With the zoom feature, you have 1, 2, 4, and 8x, as well as picture in a picture. I wouldn't run picture in a picture, generally speaking, because I like to have the best field of view as possible. And I really have no issue with the proper rifle setup engaging with the lowest magnification out to 200 yards. When you move to the front of the optic, you've got your objective lens, and this is where you focus for whatever distance you're looking at. It's very easy to turn. It's not sticky at all. It's very smooth and very precise. It was very easy to adjust as we moved around the plantation where we were hunting had no problems adjusting it for the area we were in. One of my favorite features of this optic is the fact that it has Wi-Fi connectivity. You go into the menu system, turn the hotspot on, and when you go into your phone, you connect to the app. People have been recommending the T-Vision app. I found that AGM has their own app. It works extremely well, and it allows me to download photo and video directly to my phone. And the great thing is, I don't have to have my head glued to the back of this optic the entire time. With the app, if I'm on a tripod, I can loosen it up, I can spin my gun around, be looking around the field without having to be on the gun. I could be sitting in a chair if I wanted, looking at my phone and say, oh, okay, there's a pig right there. It would be very simple to do and I don't have to be standing or glued to the gun the entire time. I think that's a really nice feature and the fact that it allows me to record audio as well because this doesn't record audio. So I'll play a clip here from the beaver hunt and you can hear what the audio sounds like. When it comes to the advertised battery life of four and a half hours, I would say that's pretty much spot on. Two CR-123s, you know, 
it does a good job. You get good performance out of it. And when I was doing my last hunt, we were out for about five hours. I was turning it on and off and I would guesstimate I had it on for around four hours and I still had one of the three bars left at the end of the night. So did a really good job, had no issues, but I probably will be adding an external battery pack just so I don't have to worry. I was turning it on and off so I didn't have to change batteries. And in doing so, you know, every time I thought somebody would be looking around, I have to stop, turn my optic back on. So an external battery pack will be a great addition to this. I think it adds a little bit of weight, but pretty much I'm going to be hunting from a tripod at night. So the weight's not really an issue. I'm just carrying it around from place to place is the biggest thing. But I think overall, you know, the fact that two batteries gives you four and a half hours of runtime, that's pretty good, especially with the cost of batteries these days. So you get a lot of juice for your money there. When it comes to color palettes, you get a little bit of something for everybody here. You've got red hot, white hot, black hot, and the fusion. I find that I hunt with red hot because the red stands out. But if I'm hunting for a long time, I'm switching back and forth to fusion just to go easier on my eyes. If you've done much work on a computer, you know that if you're typing a Microsoft Word, a bright white screen, it, it kind of burns your eyes. Your eyes start to hurt after a while. So I would switch my Microsoft Word over to the blue background with white letters because it's easier on your eyes. I find the fusion setting to be about the same thing because it's purple and orange and yellow. So it is easier on your eyes. It doesn't burn your eyes as bad if you're staring in the scope for a long time. And it's easier on your night vision. When you come off the scope, you can see much quicker than if you're staring into a bright white screen the whole time. It kind of it burns your night vision out and you take a you know a little bit to reacclimate to the surroundings at night. But I find that having the variation of palettes is really helpful. You can kind of get whatever suits the area you're in best. So it is really a handy setting. When it comes to reticles, you've got five options, so that's a nice feature. It gives a little bit of something for everybody. I'll put the five on screen now so you can see what they are. And you've got four crosshairs and then a small box. And additionally, on top of that, you can go white, green, or red for your uh, color options. So I think that's a nice feature. You can change the color of your reticle depending on what your hotness is. You know, you don't really want a red uh, crosshair on a red hot item or a white crosshair on a white hot. So you want to contrast those so that your reticle stands out so that you can make sure you make an ethical shot on the game you're going after. I think it's a really nice feature. And again, they give you a lot of variation so they can suit pretty much everybody's desires in this. Okay, now let's look at some of my experiences with this optic. You know, my first hunt was on that beaver, worked out extremely well. It was 30, 35 yards away and the optic performed beautifully. What I thought was really cool is when I'm looking at the beaver, you can see all the reflections in the water of the trees. And it was just, it was neat to have that mirrored image on the water. It's really cool to see. Next hunt was at a plantation that's 2,200 acres. And they set out quite a bit of bait for hogs at one location where they know they always come to. And we were going to have some great hog hunting footage. Sadly, as we're scouting, everything's working out great. We go out about a mile and a half around to come back down the hill to come on top of them and the wind changed direction. The wind had been crossing us, would have been perfect, but when we get up top, the wind is coming down and it blew straight from behind us down the hill. There was no hope of getting anywhere near the hogs, especially within range of this lever action rifle running subsonic ammunition. Just wasn't going to happen. So we worked around the property, did some scouting around other areas, came across a coyote and some beaver and whatnot. And while we were out there, uh, we also came across a bobcat. Sadly, bobcat season was four days after we went out. So we had to just look at it. Got a nice shot of it here for you though. And it was pretty cool to see it was sitting about a hundred yards away, which really stinks because that was well within range of me, but <sighs> legalities. I'll be back though, for sure. <laughs> um, the next thing we did was head down to the thousand yard range because on this plantation there's also a big rifle range they have a mile range and i'll show you here a shot at a thousand yards we're standing at the thousand yard mark looking back down the range and you can see here this is the platform they shoot from for the thousand yard range and you can very easily identify that this is a platform at a thousand yards it's a covered platform about 10 12 feet off the ground and if you look on the left here you will see a black object this is an unknown creature of some kind and it was 600 yards away from us roughly. And we could we watched it on the side, it kept coming towards us and then it darted off into the woods at one point. So we never came across it again, don't know what it was, but it was cool to see that I could easily make a recognition that, hey, there is a creature at about 600 yards from me. Next, we move back to the mile and from the mile, you can see all the way down this corridor. Like I said, that's a full mile to that platform. You can't really make the platform out now, but from the thousand yard mark, you could very easily make it out. Next time I go out, I'm going to start at the mile and work my way in and just see how close I have to get to recognize that that is a structure 
in the woods. So it was pretty cool to be able to see it at a thousand yards. I thought that was really neat and you could see the detail of it. You know, I know that that is the posts and beams and the roof. It's really cool. That was uh, exciting to see that this optic can put out that kind of quality, especially for that price. We also came across a coyote at about 250 yards, sadly out of range again. Next time I will definitely be using a 308 or a 223, I guarantee you. Uh, but as you can see, you can very easily identify a coyote running across the screen. So once it settled in, they took the shot and took it out. Next up, we headed out to look for some beaver. We moved over to one of the ponds. And as you can see, there's a duck blind on the backside. And you'll see different clips here. There are beaver moving around on the embankment as well as in the pond. I was on black hot here. So you see black orbs moving around in the water and on the embankment. And they took care of those in short order. And it worked, turned out to be a pretty good night. Unfortunately, we just couldn't get within range of anything major for me. But uh, next time, like I said, I'll be armed with a 308 and we'll go out and do some hog hunting for sure. I got to say, even though I didn't get anything big from that hunt, I had a ton of fun, guys. This was thoroughly one of the most enjoyable things I've done in the last 10 years. It was different. It was fun. It was exhilarating. It was frigid cold. And I can't wait to get back out there and do it again. I'm definitely addicted to this and I'm very much looking forward to going back out. Uh, if you want to see, you know, a really detailed breakdown on the menu system in this optic and what all the different settings are, drop comments below. If we get enough response for that, I'll do a full video dedicated to the menu system. That's going to be a very lengthy video and a very detailed video. And I know a lot of you guys don't want to take the time to watch that and you're not really interested in it. So if there is enough interest, I'll do that video. Additionally, check back soon. We'll be doing a video on battery pack options to power this with an external battery source and see what kind of options are available out there for this system. Like I said, you get great battery life out of two CR123s, but if you're doing a lot of hunting, it's going to get very expensive very quickly. So an external battery pack is definitely going to be the way to go for me. I almost forgot to mention it comes with an American Defense Manufacturer mount, which is awesome. These are very high quality mounts. They are not cheap and it comes standard with it, which I think is great. And it's a, a QD mount, so it's going to be very repeatable. Another feature is they also have a clip-on unit that replaces the rubber boot. So it allows you to clip it on the front of a standard scope that is 44, 50, or 56 millimeters, depending on which unit you buy. And if you can't have a dedicated thermal gun, then you can run it on any gun you want to, as long as you have the adapter to mount it to that scope. So I think that's a nice feature, especially if you're limited on cash and you only have one gun, you can make this work with whatever setup you have. So it's a really nice feature. I think they've thought ahead. They've put a lot into this They make a lot of options for it. And it just, it's a really good optic to get started with. You know, it's not a budget optic that you're going to re want to replace in six months or a year. This is going to last a long time. It'll do what you need to do 99% of the time, unless you're just going way out there, then yeah, you're going to want to step up in the line. They have higher grade optics you can go with. And eventually I'm going to want to get one of those. But for now, this is going to do everything I'm going to need it to do. Well, that's about all there is to it, guys. Like I said, I think this is a great optic, especially for the money. It's very, very feature rich. It gives you a lot of options and it's just, it's a great overall optic. Uh, don't forget, drop a comment below if you want to see a detailed breakdown of the menu system and what's involved in that. I don't mind doing the video. I just want to make sure there's enough interest for me to do it because it is a very lengthy video and it's going to be a lot of work on my end to film it. So if you do want to see it, drop a comment below. Also, don't forget, soon we'll have another video coming with a breakdown of what's available for external power pack options. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Give us a big thumbs up if you did. Have a good one.